Just thought I'd put together a little test video about caring for your top sides. Gel coat can start going a little bit chalky over time. Ours is 20 years old now and it's a dark colour, it's green, so it shows up that sort of chalkiness. And it's starting to take just a, a lot of effort, a lot of time, and I'm looking for just some uh, techniques to, to reduce that and to just keep it looking good for, for longer. Um, I've been filming this now for, for since October of last year, so it's about six months because I started uh, that preparation. And I showed some of it on the episodes of Sailing Fair Isle. And, uh, and a lot of viewers that came in with different suggestions of, uh, of, of good techniques. And one of those that I've now researched and looks really good is nanotechnology using uh, this G-Technique product that I'm going to put on, on, the, on the top coat rather than polish. Polish I've found just doesn't last on, on this boat, even the, you know, the really good stuff, and it's so time consuming to put on. So uh, this video starts in the autumn of last year with the preparation. So if I just show you what the problem is then, if we look at this side, this is how it should look. I've already had a bit of a go while we're at dockside on this side. It's a bit uh, splashed from the trip down here and it's only had one coat of uh, polish. It needs a fair bit more than that, but I'll show you what it looked like beforehand. If we come around and what uh, what we're faced with. I'll let the tide just take me down the side. But you see the bow isn't too bad. I've actually had a bit of a go at this at the dock side because I could get to it. But when we get further back, you'll see how much blooming there is on here. It's, uh, it makes the darker colors especially, you can see it all in here, go white so it shows up on dark colors pretty badly. So that's just the oxidization of that top layer and you've got to get through all that. Normally you can do it with just grinding paste but we'll, we'll go through. I'm going to do this in certain several stages before we put the polish on to protect it. Let's see how it looks. So I'm using some nice fine grade wet and dry. I'm starting with 1200 grit uh, and then I've got a bit of 3000 grit just to finish off. Use a block to keep it nice and flat and try not to just go in one direction. I use a sort of figure of eight to try not to get uh, the marks in one direction. So I've done this bit here and you can see it doesn't go shiny, it's just going to go matte. But you can see I've taken off enough to, that all this blooming has, uh, has now disappeared, which is what I'm after with the wet and dry as far as I need to, to go with that. Difficult to tell while you're doing it because when it's wet and you need to have it really nice and wet with the wet and dry, uh, it looks all shiny. While I was waiting to dry that bit up there, and you can see you know, it looks nice while you're doing it. So let it dry, um, have a look at it, make sure you've got all the blooming off, and then the rest of it can be done with the, the grinding paste. I just think this is a quicker way of doing it. I'm not saying anytime you've got a little problem with your gel coat, attack it with some wet and dry. That'd be the wrong thing to do. People, regular viewers of uh, of the episodes, will know that I've been through this a couple of times with grinding paste over the years, and it just hasn't taken enough off to to do a good enough job. I don't think to get the base as as good as I want it to be before you put the polish on. And it's the polish that's, that's going to protect it. You've got to keep that there so that nothing can get through and start, you know, with these open pores you'll get with a, a gel coat that's, that's a bit old and tired, uh, and then it'll start to bloom, especially if it's dark like this. So if I take you through the process just in one spot here, after doing the wet and dry bit that we've just seen, we move on to the grinding paste. Now this comes in three different grades. You've got heavy, medium and, and light, so just in their coarseness of uh, how much they're going to take off. We move on to the, the heavy paste, the coarse one. I'll wet this a, a little bit and apply it to here and then just rub it in so it doesn't fly everywhere and start it on a low speed. So, time myself in nice and tight. You don't need to start with the really heavy stuff unless it's uh, as bad as my gel coat is here. You could uh, just give it a little buff with the, the light stuff to, to freshen it up if that's all you need. And I'll work my way through a bit of medium. Use quite a lot of it. Uh, I've got three big jars of it here. I'll use the whole lot. You can get grinding paste that's supposed to break down as you use it, so it becomes progressively finer. I suppose that's okay if you're using one spot, but if you're doing the whole boat, then I think you might as well just go around with the heavy, then the medium, then the light. Okay, well, it looks good while it's wet, but trust me, it won't when it dries. <laughs> it's not. It's not enough. I mean, these when you get from the medium one, it says it's cutting paste plus a wax, and the light one, obviously, a bit of wax as well. But you've got to then wax it properly afterwards and. Weirdly, the, uh, I always thought this was the other way around, that you use the sort of the sheepskin ones for, for polishing, but they're more abrasive apparently, so you don't use those for polishing, you use those for the cutting. And I take that off 
and use the sponge ones. I've got some different, you get these in packs and they're sort of different hardnesses. This one's that we've got on here actually is quite soft, so they just stick on with Velcro. I'll take that one off and put a harder one on first. And we just get some polish. Now this is where I might have fallen down last time. I think I think every time it's the polish that uh, I may have not done uh, well enough because if I put it uh, last time I, I ran out of uh, good boat polish and I just used some triple wax car polish and I think that just wasn't up to the job and that's the only thing I can think of really that's let it down this badly. Uh, but I have used you know, decent ones before when uh, I could get them um, and they haven't performed that well either. I think maybe those times I just didn't put enough on because you know you need a few coats and the problem with this is that if you do it all in one go by the time you've gone around and done all this grinding you do one coat of polish and that's enough. <laughs> so you have to, I mean last time I did it um, I split it up because we, we was on a hard for a month in the Algarve uh, and I did it all uh, in the course of about 10 days along with lots of other jobs and then went back to the UK and came back and had another hit at it and of course you know you, you sort of do a better job then because you've had a rest in between uh, but I was using I couldn't get proper wax I was using this so maybe that was the problem uh, but let's have a go that's all I've got at the moment I'm going to buy some some good stuff here because I can get hold of it um, so we'll put some of this on and a bit slower. So you can see just after one coat of that it's looking good. I'll grab the camera and give you a close-up view. Uh, so that's what that part looks like. And obviously I need uh, a nice dry cloth to, to give it a good buffing but that's what it uh, looked like before. Uh, There's sort of chalkiness here and it does all come off. I'm just hoping maybe with enough good uh, coats on top of that it will stay looking like that this time. I'll put, uh, I'll put three or four coats on I think. Um, I've got all winter so I can do a bit now, have a rest, do a bit more in the spring and uh, see how it does next year. So spring has sprung and the bottom parts all been polished but following the advice of some of our viewers I'm going for the G-Technique ceramic base and ceramic top for this flat top section. Okay so this is where the magic happens hopefully. I'm just going to do this top section here before it gets onto the ridged bit so that, that's just going to be left until we uh, haul out next year but this whole top section I'm going to go through. I've obviously given it a wash over and now I'm going through the first thing you have to do when you're putting the uh, the ceramic base and the ceramic top coat on is, uh, is clean it you know, properly down to a little chemical level which and they've got special stuff for that. It's this, it's panel wipe which is dead easy and you just put it put a bit of it on the cloth and uh, go through and make sure you get everything give it a good wipe over it's uh, you'll see it basically evaporates pretty much straight away once you've got it on there it's uh, seems like it seems like good stuff so I'll give this a good go and then you can go straight on with the uh, the base coat so I'm going to do that first um, and then tomorrow it needs to have 12 hours I'll do the top so let's give this a bit of a clean Old gel coat tends to oxidise quickly, so the question is whether this micro-thin, chemically bonded coating is going to be enough to protect it. If I can keep it looking like this, I'll be more than happy. So, what do we have in here? I want one of these pads. I'll put the others away, give you a set of gloves. Show those on. I'm just going to have a little area here, probably up to the scupper, uh, should do me and we'll see how that works. So I'm just going to put a bit on the pad, just one little dot, maybe two to start just to prime it and then basically you've got to work your way through so it's got to cover everything so try and get a, a system, a grid system of up and down. You can see where it's, where it's gone, looks shiny, make sure you're right to the edges. Good, move along a little bit, one more dot. I'm going to put the top back on every time because it's expensive stuff. Along the middle, along the 
boots up along the bottom and up and down. So I'm going to try it. The grid system, go around again. That's it, I think that's well covered. Once that's done, I'm not going to use the same cloth as I used for the panel wipe. I'll get a fresh one. So I'll have one, one just for rubbing off and one for cleaning at the beginning. Let me just go over it with this just to make sure that there's no residue. They say, you know, you just get rid of the smears. I can't see too much in the way of smears on there. You see just as you go over, it becomes really clear and shiny. And, uh, and you can actually feel with the, the cloth that it uh, becomes more slick, just more slippery. Amazing stuff. There you go. It's certainly a lot faster than polishing. This would have taken me the best part of a day, but doing the preparation and applying the product has taken about 40 minutes. So that's it, top side's done. I'm hoping that's gonna reduce my workload quite a bit from now on. We'll see though, I mean, do uh, keep an eye on the description. We're, this is gonna go out in April uh, 2021. So if you're watching this sometime in advance of that, have a look at the description because there might be an update on it, which will be probably in one of the episodes. We'll keep an eye on how it lasts, how it works through the year and beyond. Uh, hopefully, yeah, that'll be good. Thanks for watching. Uh, do remember to subscribe and follow us if you don't already on the episodes. Thanks for watching.